Franny zoomed out of Christie's backpack, waving her wand. There was a burst of glittering fairy dust, and then the girls felt as if the air around them was shimmering. A wave of multicolored sparkles wrapped around them, followed by another and another. The sparkles lifted Rachel and Christie into the air, rolling around them until they were spinning in a sea of color. I feel dizzy, said Christy, giggling. I don't think I know which way is up anymore, said Rachel. They felt their shoulders tingling, and then the beautiful fairy wings appeared. We are shrinking to fairy size, said Christy in delight. We have to follow the goblins, said Franny. This is the quickest way. The waves of sparkles rode higher surrounding them with color. Then there was a whooshing sound, and they felt as if they were being sucked towards the waves. Second later, they had left the animal shelter far behind. They twisted and turned through the, a wall of colors until at last they dropped down onto a soft gray cloud and everything stopped spinning. Where are we? asked Rachel, pushing the fluffy cloud out of her way so that she could sit up. Christy fluttered her wings and looked around. Everything looked dull and fuzzy. Are we in fairyland? she asked, feeling doubtful. Yes, said Fanny, it is okay. We are above the ice castle. I brought us to a snow cloud in, ja in case Jack Frost was watching. The three fairies fluttered to the edge of the cloud. Peeking over, they saw Jack Frost's castle below. The two the towers were white with a layer of frost, and the garden stretched out towards the forest. Oh my goodness, look at the moat, said Rachel. It is like a ball of pit. Jack Frost's moat was always frozen over, but today there wasn't a glimmer of ice to be seen. Instead, the moat was completely covered with colorful jelly beans, which were piled high and hid every speck of ice. Look up there behind the castle, Christy exclaimed. A big hill of jelly beans was, was looming over the moat. Jack Frost was standing on top of it, looking down at several goblins who were lying at the bottom, riddling. Other goblins were sliding down the hill on trays, sending jelly beans flying into the air as they landed in the moat. There must be thousands of jelly beans here, said Rachel in astonishment. Yes, and I know exactly how Jack Frost has done it, said Franny. Look what's in his hand. Rachel and Christy saw a tiny piece of candy glowing in the ice lot's hand. They guessed right away that it was Franny's magical jelly bean. It, we have to get the... Magical treat back, said Christy, but how? Let's go down there and watch Jack Frost and the goblins, said Rachel. Hopefully, we will see a chance to get it back. Come on. She, Christy, and Franny swooped down to the garden, fluttering out of sight behind the Jack Frost-shaped hedges. They perched on the tiny branches from where they were standing. They could hear Jack Frost yelling at the goblins. Why are you being so slow, you fools? He shouted. Start jelly bean surfing and sort every single jelly bean into separate flavors now. The ice lord slid down the hill and started striding around the moat with his hands clasped behind his back. He glared at the goblins as they got on their hands and knees. Work faster, he growled, throwing a strawberry-flavored jelly bean into the air and catching it in his mouth. As he turned away, a goblin with a tuft of fluffy hair threw a strawberry jelly bean into his mouth too. Jack Frost walked on, and every time he threw a jelly bean into his mouth, the goblins did the same. Then one of them missed, and the jelly bean hit him in the eye. Yowch, he squawked. 
Jack Frost swirled around and glared at the goblin. He saw the other goblins gobbling up the jelly beans, and his eyes bulged angrily. His shoulders shook, his ears twitched. They are mine, not yours, he shrieked, pointing a bony finger at the goblins. But they are so yummy, wailed a tall goblin. Jack Frost snatched a yellow jelly bean out of the goblin sand and ate it. Leave the jelly beans alone, he shouted. Every single one is for me and only me to eat.